record, yeah. And remind me at the end, Helen, to stop. Hello, everyone. Um, Fergus Dolan here from NALA. You're very welcome to our ESOL webinar, ESOL Students with Literacy Issues, Where to Start. I'm delighted to have um, Susan Clancy. She's an ESOL coordinator with the Blanchetown Adult Education Centre in the Dublin and Dundee ETB. And um, Susan's going to be your facilitator today. Just one little housekeeping thing, I suppose you'd call it that. On your dashboard at the side, uh, if you can't see your dashboard at the right hand side, click on the little orange box with the white arrow inside it. If you click on that, it should open out your dashboard and you should be able to see audio, attendees, questions, a few things like that. So what we're asking for the questions and answer session is that as Susan is talking or at the end, you click on the questions option and you type in your question there. And then at the end, uh, myself, my colleague, Helen Ryan, will read out the questions for Susan and she'll verbally answer them. Because we, we find it best to avoid interference to keep everyone on mute. So I'm going to mute myself now and turn off my camera. So all the best and all the best, Susan. See you. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to shut my own picture. Well, Fergus, I'm not sure I'm going to close this. I don't want to shut myself off, but... Uh. Okay, right. Okay, now I can't see me, but you can see me. So hopefully, yeah. So yeah, great. So you're very welcome. Um, this presentation is ESOL students with literacy problems, where to start. Um, and I'm just going to tell you a bit about me. Um, first, this is um, this is the Adult Education Center in Blanchardstown where I worked. I've been working here for about 16 years first as a literacy tutor and the last 10 years I've been as an ESOL tutor and the last two years I've been the ESOL coordinator there and I have a group of about 10 ESOL tutor, tutors that work with me and hopefully a lot of them are watching so shout out to the ESOL tutors in Blanchardstown um, and together we run about 25 different ESOL classes in Dublin 15. So what we do in Blanchardstown is we do ESOL um, QQI at level three. We do ESOL elementary level classes and beginner level classes, and we run classes for students who have literacy issues. And that's what I wanna focus on today with you and talk about today with you. So a little overview of what we're gonna do here. Um, I'm gonna talk about um, how do literacy issues present in the classroom. So what does a class like this look like practically? We're gonna talk a little bit about building community in the classroom and why that's important to do at this level. And I'm gonna give you some ideas and resources, which I know everybody likes, and then look a little bit at what success looks like um, at this level. And then I'll take some questions. So before we get into to the first um, area there, I wanna have a look at an application form. And I want you to pretend that you are a student that has literacy issues. And usually a smiling tutor hands you a pen and hands you a form. And if the form looks something like this. So this is an application form translated into um, Japanese. So how do you feel when you look at that? Like initially, you're handed a pen and you're handed a piece of paper. Um, do you pretend that you know what you're doing? Do you feel nervous? Um, so just consider that. And you might be able to make out, I know it's kind of hard to see, but is there anything there you identify? Like you can kind of make out PPS numbers. So you might be able to guess as to, to what that the answers to that would be like. Now you're sitting at home looking at this, but imagine the, the person to your left and your right is scribbling away madly how do you feel then do you just want to leave do you put your hands up and admit that you can't fill out this form at all um so keep keep those in feelings in mind as we move along and i'm going to show you now the english translation of this form okay again it's a little bit difficult to see but you can make out you know first name family name gender address how do your feelings contrast like as soon as you recognize words do you feel relieved like oh, okay i feel in control i know what i'm i'm doing now i can fill this out so what i want you to do is keep in mind those feelings as we go through the seminar and also um 
as you're teaching students at this level, remember what that feels like to have everybody else seem to understand what's happening, but you can't make it out. Um, so how, the first section I wanna look at is how do students present in a classroom like this? Or what do we mean when we say literacy difficulties? And basically what we mean is, in other words, an adult who has not had education in their country of origin, or maybe their education was cut short before they got to, to Ireland. And that can happen for a lot of different reasons. Maybe the, the student has come from a war-torn country. Maybe it's gender expectations. In some countries, they don't believe in educating girls. Um, maybe you come from a country where there's an unstable government or education wasn't free. Um, or maybe just your family situation. Maybe you come from a family of refugees or migrants. So there's a lot of different reasons why you might arrive in Ireland as an adult and not have had any education in your first country. So there's a wide variety of reasons and it's a wide for group. We can't just pinpoint them all into the same type of group. So that's how they present. And um, they present as well with a, a, a range of emotions. So remember that um, Japanese enrollment form, you know, how you felt when you saw that. So students might come into your class feeling uncomfortable, feeling insecure, feeling anxious. And you really have to just remember them coming and being in the classroom is a huge achievement. And, and just, you know, be grateful that they're there and just deal with the emotions that they have around that. Um, also, they need to learn how to be students. So I think this is one of the things you have to remember. Not only are you teaching them English, you're teaching them the ethos of the classroom and what that's about. So a real um, difference between um, a class like this where people have literacy issues and absolute beginners is that in an absolute beginner class, maybe both groups don't know any English and can't speak any English, but in absolute beginners, they tend to know how to be students. They come with pens, they come with pencils, paper, folders. They know to switch off their mobile phone in the classroom. They know what's expected of them in that environment. And the students that have literacy issues, a lot of them won't know that. So that's part of what you're gonna teach them. But the good news is, it's never too late to learn. And, and these things do come up again and again like I find students at this level, they forget pens, they forget folders, they still try to bring their children into class, they um, might go ahead and take a phone call when their mobile goes off and just chat away in their own language within the classroom because they don't understand the etiquette. And if they've never been to school, you can understand that. How would they know that that's not acceptable? So you just, it's kind of a messy classroom, but you just have to roll with that and again and again remind them of this is, this is what's expected when you're a student. So students also um, present in the classroom at various levels. So some students can speak English well, but can't write in any language. Some students can neither write or speak in English or any language. So it's a little bit of a tricky one and I've gotten fooled before, particularly a lot of students from African countries, their speaking is fluent. And so I assume that they're at a higher level than they are. And then when I put them in classes, I realized that they, they can't actually read or write. So um, the sooner you can figure out what the needs of your classroom are, the, the more you'll be able to address what those needs are. And, and even though both are classrooms with people with literacy issues, they're very different because if you've got a classroom of speakers, you can do different things, or you can, if you have a classroom where they can't speak or read, it's a different, different atmosphere. So you kind of just have to plan for both and, and roll with both. So the next thing I want to look at with you is building community in the classroom. So I think building community is important in any classroom, but why do you think it would be particularly important at this level? Now keep in mind what we talked about before about the feelings of anxiety, the feeling insecure. If you feel like your classroom is your community, you're not gonna wanna miss that class. If you feel insecure and you're not too sure, you're gonna find people are gonna be absent a lot. So building community is really important. You want the student to want to come to your class and not want to miss it. So how we go about doing that is 
the one of the things is in the structure of the classroom we keep the classes very small so the maximum we might enroll in a class like this would be six four to six students um another thing that we do which is great for building community and just running the classroom is we use um, an adult literacy volunteer as a helper in the classroom and if there's any way you can work that out in your service it's just a fantastic idea because what you can do is you put the two weakest students you put the helper in the middle and the two weakest students on either side so the helper can be um, helping them along so then the ESOL tutor can keep the momentum of the classroom going so that the better students aren't bored so you're keeping their attention but yet you're not losing the weaker ones at the same time and you have to, the helper has to be aware to, to not become a crutch to those weaker students because the tendency is to let the helper do all the work. So they have to be patient, but yet be insistent that the students do their own work. So that's been a great asset that we've used, which is, which is really helpful. Um, secondly, with building community is using peer learning. And I think peer learning is great in any classroom, but particularly at this level. So I just want to read to you then where it says on the left side of, of the slide, um, we learn 10% of what we read, 20% of what we hear, 30% of what we see, 50% of what we both see and hear, 70% of what is discussed with others, 80% of what we experience personally, and 95% of what we teach to someone else. So find out which languages your students speak and allow the students with the same, same language to sit together and help each other. Um, I had that experience. I was um, teaching a group and I had two Arab ladies in the class and one had started in September and then the other lady joined later after Christmas time. And they were both from the same country. So the first student explained everything to the first lady. She introduced me, she introduced all the students, she explained what the expectations were in her language. and. It was great for her. It was just lovely to see her face light up to feel like she was helping somebody. And secondly, it was lovely for the new student because everything was explained in her first language and she felt more comfortable right away. So that was that's a great thing to do. And then along with um, building community, um, give students time to speak. And that's great in a class where you have a lot of speakers because um, one thing I was was I was talking to tutors um, before just about starting out with um, in learning to be students. Um, one of my tutors told me when she passed out pins, the the student, one of the ladies grabbed the pen like this, nearly like a baby would. So again, you're teaching them to be students and to write and, to, and their hands are gonna get tired. You know, they're gonna cramp up when they're learning, you know, this. So giving students time to speak gives them a break from the writing. Sometimes you'll see them massaging their hands after you've done a bit of writing. Um, and also um, it builds community because they're speaking to each other and it works great with, with students who can speak well, but also with the weaker ones because that's something you need to teach them as well and practice in, in the classroom. It just gives them more time to, to practice. Um, Number four there, listen to shared experiences. Obviously, with speaking and listening go hand in hand, but listening to shared experiences is a great way of building community because you're beginning to understand their world and what's going on with their world. And I had um, an example of this. I was doing a lesson where all I wanted to do was teach the students about how to dial 999 or what to do in emergency we talked about the guards versus the fire brigade versus the ambulance service and like how to just push the buttons that's all i wanted to get out of the lesson and as i listened i realized that they were asking me how much you had to pay the guards how much you had to pay the ambulance service and i realized they were talking about bribes and i was able to explain no no in this country you can trust the government officials like it's 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 um it's fine you know so that lesson was one of the best lessons and i didn't intend to teach any of that kind of thing all i wanted to do was teach them to do 999 but when you listen then you find out kind of what needs they are and you you begin to understand each other better as a group um finally the 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 
great way to build community in the classroom is just to have fun together. And I had a group that um, they loved to celebrate their birthdays and the way they did it, it just happened organically. They started it. The person that had the birthday would bring in food and that gives them an opportunity to be the expert because they're bringing in food from their country, which they are the expert at and they're sharing that. And it's a great way to for everybody to feel comfortable is just to share food and have fun together. And also I try to, I want the students to know that our classroom is not just, it's one community, but I want to, them to realize they're part of a bigger community as in the whole school, which they never would have probably experienced before. So when the whole service does a food festival, I try to involve my class. Or if we do a Christmas raffle, I explain what that is and what's going on and how, um, you know, the different charities that we've chosen to support. So it just makes them feel part of something bigger than just our classroom, which they mightn't have never experienced that before outside their family. Okay, so now for the good part, you're all thinking resources and ideas. I know whenever I come to these things, it's like being invited to a party and you get a party bag when you go home by taking home some resources. But unfortunately, not to disappoint you, but resources appropriate for adult learners who have literacy difficulties are really difficult to find. A lot is child-centered, so it'll have pictures of bunny rabbits or mice or whatever on it. So it's just probably not as appropriate to, to give to adults. A lot of also, um, these kind of materials are focused on native Irish speaker or native English speakers and not on foreign learners. Um, so in general, the ESL tutor must adapt materials and worksheets that they have, you know, on their end. But I'm going to show you what I've learned and I'm just going to show you some some tricks I've learned along the way. So when creating your own materials, don't um, write instructions on the worksheet. So don't write please read this or please answer the questions or fill in the spaces. Just do the, just show, give them the exercise and then explain it in person rather than, it's just more words on the page and it just gets more confusing if you write the instructions on the page. And um, secondly, keep focused on students' needs. Now this is what you think they need and also what they think they need. So it's, both and, but one of the things I always start with is just them being able to read and write their name, their address, their phone number, their PPS number, the kinds of things that they'll be asked for when they go to other offices. So that builds confidence so they don't have to be afraid every time they're handed a form, they know what they're doing. And we practice that again and again and again. Um, and then um, an example of one of their needs, I had a lady who really wanted to learn to write a birthday card to her daughter. So we practiced that again and again. And that was a great achievement for her when the birthday actually came to give her daughter a card that she had written herself. So you're focusing on things you know they need and also what they want to learn. And you, you probably know this next one, just being a teacher, but teach the same idea using lots of different methods. So say that you want to teach them about going to the doctor you know, you can use games and pictures and clothes exercises and puzzles and reading and discussion. So it's all around the same theme, but you're you're repeating it in lots of different ways. So it's not the same worksheet again and again, but it's different um, different ideas around the same theme. Um, be aware of common mistakes. So this kind of has to do with um, the writing. Um, a lot of people confuse capitals and lowercase. Um, spacing, they run all the words together. Um, phonics, you know, students know that letters have names, but they don't know that they have sounds and they have different sounds. So it's all it's all that kind of thing. And be aware of letter shapes. The students also often confuse B and D or M and M, you know, the, the letters that look very similar. So a way you can teach this is to use a basic writing copy. And what I mean by that is like the ones that we use for junior and senior infants. And I'll show you what I mean here. This is um, like, it's got like the, the blue and the red lines. I don't, hopefully you can see that okay. And you can see how, you know, it's much easier, you know, to, to show them um, a capital versus a lowercase letter and the shape of the letters as opposed to this. Imagine I just handed them this, just a, a notebook page. 
you see how that's much easier and you can pick up those writing copies fairly inexpensively. Um, also when creating worksheets, use color, pictures, appropriate font. So what I mean by that is, you know, not a lot of words on the page, just a few words and basic, um, basic um, font, you know, big letters and, and nice spacing. And also use technology as well um, because it's great to, to show. And um, I wanna show you next, this is, I'm gonna flip the slide here in a minute. And I wanna show you something that one of my tutors um, Bernie McDonald made, and I think it's just super. She actually made it in the midst of this COVID crisis as something we could put online for students, but you could use it in the classroom as well. Um, and I want you to notice that what I'm talking about, about the, the spacing and the colors and the very little on the page. Now there is sound to this as well. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to hear the sound or not, but if you can't, that's okay. You can, you can still see what I'm talking about, so. Hello. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Would you like to do some work today, learn some English? Let's have a look. Yeah, so I hope I hope you get that. I just think that's great. And it goes on um, as technology, you know, as a, a PowerPoint and it goes on and does a few more things. And it's just great, you know, what you can do. Um, some good ideas you could adapt as well are, um, so when I'm saying you have to create your worksheets, your own worksheet, I'm not saying you have to do everything yourself. There's some great stuff out there that you can change and adapt. And I find um, the NALA resources really great. And I'm not just saying that because NALA asked me to do this seminar. I really do find them wonderful. Um, NALA, there's a couple books that I got through NALA, but they're done by Integrate Ireland. Ancha, which is, um, if you can see that, that's an example of that book and it's really good for this level and this one as well. Um, they are both done by Integrate Ireland. Um, if you can get your hands on those, they're very good, you know. Um, another thing I find great for resources is the Read Right Now series, which Anala has published these for um, Irish people who have literacy problems or English speakers who have literacy problems. There's about, geez, there's about 11 or 12 of these at this stage and they're really great books. Not everything you might be able to just photocopy from the book and use, but you can certainly take the ideas and adapt them. So yeah, there's plenty out there. You just need to tweak it to suit your group. Um, I put down some few, a few websites because I know everybody loves websites. Um, and again, like I say, there's One Stop English, Boggles World, skillsworkshop.org, English for Everyone. And, you know, they're all good, but again, you may have to change and adapt a little bit, but, you know, if you keep in mind what I said earlier about color and font and stuff, it'd be good. And also don't forget, you can use technology in the classroom as well, um, not just to create your work, but for the students to use. Like I know my students, um, they all have phones. So if you can show them how to do a few things on their phone, and in Blanchardstown, we're lucky enough to have iPads. And I know students love working on the iPads and playing games. So it doesn't matter. Students at all level love this, including the, the, those that have literacy issues. So, so finally, what does success look like at this level? And um, well, progress is slow. There's no denying that. It may take um, students a little while to move on to the next level of class. Um, but you have to keep that in mind when you're doing it. And also, usually students at this level, they can be quite vulnerable and they have other issues going on in their lives besides just attending your class. So you just have to keep that in mind. Um, success is a journey and not a destination. You need to congratulate yourself and congratulate your students when you achieve milestones. I know um, this last Christmas, one of my tutors was given a Christmas card from one of her students. And it was the first Christmas card that this lady had ever written. So you can imagine how proud the student was and how treasured that Christmas card is by her teacher. And um, so milestones are different, but just as, re as rewarding. So every time your class bonds together or two people become friends, I mean, those things are very important because again, it might be the first time that that's happening for them. They didn't get that opportunity as a younger person. So it is, it is, um, it is different, but um, it, it very rewarding. And I would encourage you, if you have a couple of teachers working at this level together in your service, to meet together, to share ideas and to swap stories because you're gonna need that 
if you're going to stay working with this level at the long for the long term because it, you do need encouragement of each other um and it is so satisfying when somebody moves up out of your class to the next level or their life is improved by attending your class and in some ways i feel like it's more satisfying than teaching at a higher level because you expect those students to move on quickly so let me just review a little bit what we've done together so we've looked at how literacy issues present in the classroom we looked at building community and why that's important and then i tried to show you some resources and ideas that you could use and then finally, we've looked at what does success look like. So now, I guess we have time for questions. I've gone a little long, but hopefully we have some time for questions. So um, I don't know, Fergus, or um, if you want to come in here.